Hello viewers, today we are going to talk about uh, the in the second section of the topic ethics, we are going to talk about meta ethical theories. Uh, if you take a look at the slide, it questions, well uh, in meta ethical theories, the first uh, issue that we would be tackling is ethical relativism. Is there anything wrong at all? Now, that is the fundamental question. Now, if you would recollect that uh, uh, when we talk about ethical uh, uh, meta ethics, we have talked about uh, uh, there being three uh, gradations in ethics. The first one being the deepest and the most foundational question tackled by meta ethics. The second uh, tackled by normative ethics or mor moral theories and the third one is applied ethics where it uh, uh, where moral theories meet real world problems out there. Now, meta ethics is uh, uh, the most foundational or deepest questions of moral philosophy. Ev any any uh, subject, any issue or any topic when it has meta prefixed, it becomes a second order study, a study about the study itself. When if you take a look at the slide, when, whenever this word meta is put in, meta means second order or studying from a distance. So, that way uh, when we talk about metaphysics, it is a study about physics, whereas physics would be about the uh, roughly you know, physical bodies and measurable entities, metaphysics would be about studying the various uh, methodologies of studying physics. Now, coming back to meta ethics. So, meta ethics is actually uh, uh, taking a second person or, or, or a second order view, a distant view on the discipline of ethics that before we start theorizing on ethics, what are the most foundational questions? Can we theorize on ethics? Now, if you look at the uh, 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 first question that we talk about which is ethical relativism, is anything wrong at all, right. Now, this is a question that I think many of you must have faced uh, earlier, right. Well, let me put forth a view that well, what do we mean uh, when we say is anything wrong at all. Now, many of us uh, have uh, perhaps thought that well, uh, suppose I need to know what is the color of this board. I would ident I would ask uh, I would think it is green I would ask a few others that what do you think is the color of the board green uh, color of the board some of them may say green may, maybe all of them would say green maybe somebody would say it is some other color how would we verify we would verify then well by a scientific instrument that would measure the uh, frequency and wavelength of the light waves bouncing back from this board and that would be an uh, undeniable proof that well the board is of so and so color. Now, what does this question signify or what does this example signify? The example signifies that well, there can be an objective answer to the question what is the color of this board, but in the same strain do we wonder can there be an objective answer to what is the right thing to do. That there is something called right and wrong. Now, say uh, uh, most of us would feel perhaps or would opine that uh, uh, unprovoked violence is wrong. Now, uh, let us compare it with the same board example. Now, in the board, if we say well, two types of proposition we take. board is green unprovoked violence is wrong or bad now let's say these are two kinds of propositions that we have taken right well, the board is green and unprovoked violence is bad or wrong. We saw in this example, well, first is ask others, right. Here also we can have the same classification we ask others, whether this is, uh, uh, whether this holds or not. Maybe 
uh, most of us would agree that well unprovoked violence is uh, bad or wrong or evil and just as most of us would agree that well the color of the board is green if there is a difference of opinion if the answer to this is yes all agree then it's over but if it is no then what now in the same strain that when we ask others and if it's yes all agree then we have a uh, consensus and agreement by uh, uh, the number of questioners again of course there is a little uh, uh, disclaimer there that maybe even if all of them agree it could be different well in either case uh, even if all agree or if uh, mm, there is a disagreement the next question that is coming up is are we uh, once uh, we want to verify this how do we verify this well for this question we the uh, we verify it by a instrument what does the instrument do it measures the world out there now what about this question now coming back now spinning this story around the question that we asked that well if unprovoked violence is wrong how do we know well we ask others and others agree or disagree but we now need a uh, extrinsic external verification and where where do we get this is that a fact of the world can we look out into the world to find what there is that there is something uh, uh, wrong with uh, uh, unprovoked violence many of us would think well there is nothing out there in the world there is no instrument that can tell us that well there is something uh, 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 wrong with unprovoked violence and therefore maybe this cannot be verified so can we then the question comes that if this be the reasoning then the ultimate question that comes is is there anything wrong at all this comes out to be the fundamental question that we are going to um, tackle now in this session because this is a meta ethical question when it asks that is there anything wrong at all now coming back to the uh, presentation now when we ask the question that is anything wrong at all we are asking a second order question now what is uh, meta ethics well um, it, it involves a lot of question marks and a lot of thinking and because it goes into the foundations of the mo of uh, moral theorizing or ethical theorizing now uh, can moral claims be true or false what is the source or justification of moral claims right if we find a justification of moral claims what is the source how do you justify moral claims does moral philosophy rest on a mistake interestingly uh, a very uh, seminal paper in ethics was also written by the same name that does moral philosophy rest on a mistake that is are there reasons to progress with moral philosophy how is our social psychological build determining our ethical world view well now if you do a lot of thinking that where uh, what is the foundation um, of the ethical quest or uh, ethical uh, theorizing now can moral claims be true or false these are the questions that are raised by meta ethics uh, if if the claims are true or false what how do we justify the claims is there any any justification for progressing with moral philosophy well how is our socio psychological build determining our ethical world view that is is it that how the way we are uh, brought up the way uh, we are the experiences that we are exposed to determine our ethical world view so these are the questions that meta ethics tackles well the first question we talk about that well uh, is the ethical relativism right 
Now, there is a foundation, this is a foundational meta ethical question that we face before philosophizing on morality. The, now, pay attention, this is the claim of uh, ethical relativism. The claim of ethical relativism may be put forth as that there are various moral systems or frames of references, frames of reference and that there can be no hierarchy made between the various frames of reference, that there can be no transperspectival ethical system. Every ethical system develops in its own environment and is applicable to its own environment only. Okay. Now, let us look at this uh, uh, question that we are tackling that well, like many of us would perhaps think that well, uh, it, it is a common uh, uh, term today to say that well, I am non-judgmental, right? that I do not make any judgments that ethical relativism is being non-judgmental. That is a crucial uh, term that we might need to be aware of. That what do I say when I say, uh, what do I mean when I say that I am non-judgmental as an ethicist or in my ethical perspective. Now, when I say when uh, perhaps, when I, when somebody says that he or she is non-judgmental, what she or he probably and more accurately means is that that person does not see that one uh, uh, person can judge the moral claims of another person. That means, uh, my moral claims are my moral claims and your moral claims are your moral claims and there is no way I can judge yours or you can judge mine, because we belong to different domains. It is the same, it is a powerful uh, argument uh, which uh, relativists in various domain give, relativists in general and ethical relativists in particular. Well, the phrase like you cannot compare apple with oranges, because they are simply two different kinds of fruits. To compare any uh, two claims or entities, there has to be a common factor. You cannot compare, uh, uh, the relativist claim as well, you cannot compare an apple with an orange, because they are different fruits. But well, you can compare an apple with an orange, if you are uh, 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 exploring from the uh, dimension of sweetness, you are exploring from the dimension of weight, you are exploring from the uh, dimension of aesthetic appeal. That could of course, be a little questionable initially, but we leave uh, uh, that question now, for it is out of the purview of our inquiry in this uh, uh, course. But if apples and oranges can be compared with respect to their sweetness, can moral claims be compared? Now, the ethical relativist says that well, there are various moral frames of reference, right. And there is no way we can compare one frame of reference for, uh, with the other. Now, that would mean that well, uh, if I have arrived at a moral frame of reference, from whatever be the causes, be it my socialization, my religion, my culture, A, and somebody else has come up with another moral frame of reference, B, the two cannot uh, judge upon each other, each is right from his own perspective. Now, such a claim seems very uh, plural, very fashionable, very tolerant, very uh, acceptable, very uh, polished, very sophisticated, very uh, open and uh, uh, very cosmopolitan. But let us explore this claim to find out that, well, if this is really the case. Uh, so, let us uh, uh, clearly look at uh, uh, the slide now, that what exactly is the claim. Now, as uh, uh, philosophers, we would like to first define what is the problem. So, what we need to remember is this crucial way, that there are various moral systems or frames of reference and that there can be no hierarchy made between the various frames of reference. Now, notice what this is not denying. Now, it is saying that well, if I say that there are no moral values, am I an ethical relativist? No. What am I? I am actually a 
moral or ethical nihilist. Now, what the ethical relativist, we will refer to it shortly as uh, in abbreviation as ER, what the e ethical relativists claim is that there are right, there is right and wrong, right. And uh, these right and wrong are not uh, depend on their frames of references and there can be no transperspectival ethical system for the same. Well, let us look at a presentation to know the detail. As we find mentioned on the slide that there can be no transperspectival uh, system. Now, uh, every ethical system develops in, in its own environment is, and is um, applicable to its own environment only. Now, let us look at this on a, a new slide and what is the difference, uh, because our understanding of ethical relativism is very essential to proceed further. Now, first what can be, uh, what various positions can be, first that there are no moral or ethical values at all. Right. Now, this could be that well, they are figments of imagination, or uh, uh, they, they are uh, creation of con for convenience. Now, in either case, uh, if they are fragments of imagination and we uh, downright hold that there are no uh, moral uh, or ethical values that uh, uh, ethical uh, or moral values are meaningless. Then, we are an ethical nihilist or moral nihilist that is denying the very existence of morality. Whereas, these two domains are uh, claiming that uh, uh, moral values are uh, fiction, fictitious, but meaningful fictitious. We could see that there are certain strains of ethical theories such as emotivists, which uh, subscribe to this kind of a uh, theory. But if you, if one claims that ethical values are meaningless, then we are strictly an ethical nihilist. Now, if second I hold that there are ethical values, and or but, they originate and depend only on their uh, frames of reference. then I am an ethical relativist. That uh, the ethical relativist is claiming that there are ethical values, but the ethical values are relative to the frames of reference in which they have originated. There is nothing absolute about them. Now, if there is nothing absolute, what it means? That well, every uh, ethical value is from its perspective, from a perspective. No transperspectival value. Now, if this is the claim, that there are no transperspectival values, then well, uh, we are strictly an ethical relativist. Now, we need to be clear or uh, why we are focusing on this uh, um, uh, fact is that well, our understanding of ethical relativism needs to be very sharp, distinguished from uh, various other strains possible. Now, the ethical relativist agrees that there are moral values, only says that these values come from uh, a frame of reference and there is no 
a way of comparing uh, moral values from different frames of reference. Now, if this be the case, what is uh, uh, the situation, right? Now, uh, let us let us first look at uh, uh, evaluate oneself, whether you belong to the first category or the second category or none. Take a, please take a look at the slide. Now, uh, the first category would claim that there are no moral values, that everything is subjective imagination, then uh, you are an ethical nihilist. The second is an ethical relativist, which says that well, uh, you are uh, mm, you believe in ethical values, but these values are depend on their frames of reference. The third can be an uh, absolute frame of reference. The third can be uh, termed as uh, moral or ethical absolutism that there is a transperspectival um, value or values. Now, if you go on to the next slide to say, uh, see that uh, what is the appeal of ethical relativism. For many of us who would uh, uh, find ourselves belonging to well that uh, yes, there are uh, moral values, but uh, it depends on frames of reference. Well, let us assume that uh, get into the psyche of these non-judgmental perspective or uh, that one's ethical theories cannot be. Uh, judge from another perspective. Well, uh, it is common facts that we have heard, if you look at the slide. The appeal of ethical relativism is that to each his own. It is common to come across the view that each one of us has a right to his or her own ethical point of view and that others ought not to interfere. Right? Now, does this strike uh, to you as liberal? It seems that ethical relativism gives space to the viewpoint of the other. It is non-absolutistic and therefore non-autocratic. It seems to it seems only to advocate moral pluralism and a tolerance for the view of other. It is also as associated with intellectual humility or fallibility. Okay. Now, let us take a look that um, what is the uh, appeal of ethical relativism. Now, the ethical relativist is uh, of the opinion that there are various frames of, ref um, uh, frames of reference in uh, terms of moral claim and that one frame of reference cannot be compared to the uh, other frame of reference. They are different. Now, this non-judgmental claim that we cannot judge others. Uh, has an appeal of its own and let us try to analyze what is the appeal of such a non-judgmental uh, 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 position or, or the position of an ethical relativist. First, its uh, claim is it gives space to the view point of the other. Now, we see that well, uh, giving the other space because as long as we hold an absolute judgment, we find it imposing on all others. Now, the ethical relativism is tol is not only tolerant, is leaves ontological psychological space to the other. Uh, so, it is non absolutistic and therefore, non autocratic. It, it is not absolutistic, because it does not commit to any absolute claims, which are bounding, uh, which are binding on the other. Nothing is binding on the other. Now, it seems to advocate moral pluralism and a tolerance for the view of the other. Now, if nothing is binding on the other, can we infer from this that nothing can be binding on the other. Now, this is a crucial jump, which perhaps uh, nothing is binding to nothing can be binding. This is perhaps the crucial jump that the ethical relativist takes. Well, 
if nothing is binding on the other, is it also the uh, position that nothing can be binding on the other. Right? Think over this, this distinction and we will talk about it in the coming slides. Now, our claim is that, well, is the appeal of uh, ethical relativism misplaced? Uh, tolerance is a virtue. Let us explore. What exactly do we mean by tolerance? When x or any person tolerates y, a claim or an act, uh, let y stand for a claim or an act. So, when x tolerates y, is not x already making a judgment upon y? Only x is merely refraining from expressing or enacting it. A trans perspectival frame of reference is the goal of an ethical engagement. This is crucial. Is the universal declaration of human rights an example of such a trans perspectival claim? Okay. Uh, this is a question that is raised for you to uh, think over. Now, uh, tolerance is a virtue, it has intellectual humility or it has uh, 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 a level of tolerance associated with. Well, well, there are various arguments that the ethical relativists give. That first to start with that well, uh, that there are different cultures and different moral practices. So, uh, wherever cultures differ, moral practices differ and therefore, we find that well, uh, uh, ethical relativism is uh, uh, a, a well founded claim that there can be no final morality. Now, let us look at this way. When cultures interact, right? when culture A and culture B interact, how do they arrive at a consensus? There are very crucial, crucial questions that we would face over here is well. Uh, if, if uh, uh, let us take again an example, let us have culture A and culture B. Let us see, let us have them interact, right. Like, uh, Most of us uh, are now have been exposed to cosmopolitan or uh, a culture separate from what we have been raised with. Now, uh, there are uh, moral practices which differ a lot. So, uh, let us say now the ethical relativist, the non judgmental relativist claims that well, uh, somebody who comes from culture A, somebody who comes from culture B have different moral values. Now, if these two moral values are different, we find that when they interact, what are the moral values that they would imbibe? Now, look at it this way. Now, if A and B are interacting, let us imagine uh, A as an individual uh, uh, in, in, in interesting and uh, uh, a very relatable choice is say, uh, A is an individual gets married to B as an individual, right? they get married. Now, A and B have different, uh, uh, have been raised in different cultures, they decide to get married and now they uh, are married and they live together. Now, there is a limit to the uh, uh, plurality they can observe. Suppose, uh, uh, every, every cultural value that they have, uh, they will somehow have to find a middle way or a, uh, a final moral value. Say, uh, if one believes in, in uh, uh, aggressively believes in not wasting food and the other believes that well food has to be offered to uh, uh, plants and animals. So, he uh, or she puts in cooked food on, on uh, outside uh, which to the other individual is a waste of food. Now, this is strictly an example where two pr uh, practices are clashing and there can be only one resolution because we share one final space. So, here how do we arrive at a uh, practice. How do you arrive at a conclusion, at a final practice? Now, this is a dilemma that the ethical relativist faces that well, uh, we are very happy that A and B are married, but after that what is the final moral values or cultural values that will come along. So, uh, oh there is a little bit of spelling mistake here. Uh, okay. Now, when A and B are married, the final moral values, where does that come from? A and B have to 
interact, negotiate. There can be trans-perspectival values according to absolutist, where uh, both have to uh, uh, evaluate their uh, values and bring forth a, uh, a final moral value. Now, let us again take a look at this. What are differences in values? Because uh, uh, ethical relativism found, uh, is founded on uh, the first observ the observations that we have that well there are various cultures and therefore various ethical values. Now, what exactly is a value? Clarity in these uh, uh, concepts is necessary to progress further. Now, if uh, uh, somebody believes, let me let me take, give an example uh, that. Well, uh, why do we hold an, uh, an entrance examination or a test for recruitment or for admission into a uh, coveted college or course? We hold a test because it uh, gives us uh, a, a hierarchy of uh, uh, capable students and the uh, students, the, the top lot for which the student, uh, the college or the course has vacancy are invited to join. Now, we find this fair, right? fairness as a value, examination process as a uh, practice. Now, this practice uh, uh, has its core value as fairness or justice that well, depending on the performance of the um, entrance uh, examination procedure, you would be invited for an interview. Fair enough. Now, let us look at it this way. Let us go flashback 1000 years back into uh, uh, India's past. Now, there again, now there was this Gurukul system in which admission was open only to the Brahmins. Now, if that uh, caste based admission, does it seem to be fair? It is uh, again that is an entrance, uh, that is an examination procedure, that is a practice, does it seem to be fair? Now, these are two different practices both targeting fairness. Today, we find it uh, 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 unfair, but let us try to reason how uh, uh, perhaps people then reasoned. Let us say that uh, the people uh, uh, assumed or believed um, unquestioningly that there was, there were uh, lives and after lives and birth and death and uh, beyond that there were lives. So, what and uh, where and how you are born depends on the uh, accumulate of uh, your karmic uh, uh, desert that you have accumulated over the past life. So, if you are born into uh, 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 a clan or a caste that uh, is entitled to education, that is not an accident, but because it is your desert from your past lives. Now, look at the fairness brigade. Now, we find this practice unfair today, because we believe that uh, birth is a matter of accident. But if we believe that birth is a, a result of your cumulative uh, uh, achievements of your past lives, then this uh, 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 procedure, this, this custom of entrance uh, via clan or caste again becomes fair. So, notice that there is a practice right, but the core of which is a value. Let us even uh, uh, think of simpler examples. Uh, in the oriental tradition, one would uh, 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 bow down to one's elders to express respect. In uh, occidental traditions, one would uh, shake hands uh, to greet even a, uh, an elder. Now, these are two different practices, both of them uh, may appear uh, contradictory at the superficial level, but within them they embody the same value. So, practices or uh, are uh, uh, the, uh, the, the paraphernalia around values. Uh, or values are embodied in cultural practices. So, to read um, separation or difference in practices is not to infer immediately that there is a 
difference in values. So, let us take a uh, let us let us note down this crucial point that difference in practices is not necessarily difference in values. Now, this is a crucial claim that we need to comprehend that well, very often the ethical relativists makes this mistake of uh, finding difference in practices as difference in uh, cultural values. Uh, say in, in one culture, uh, if, if uh, uh, it is considered that it, uh, premarital sex is considered immoral, in another culture premarital sex is considered moral is uh, uh, still a matter of practices, because for one uh, uh, the act of uh, uh, copulation uh, embodies a, a commitment and in another culture perhaps it does not embody a commitment. So, as long both the cultures respect commitment and breaking commitment or following one's commitment or following the commitment made is a core value. Now, uh, in one culture uh, uh, the act of copulation is uh, an act of commitment and therefore, uh, it should not be made before it should not it could should not be done in that culture, because it is a violation of the commitment. Uh, in fact, it is prior to the making of a commitment. So, uh, violation of a commitment is a core value, but how it is expressed. Now, for somebody say something like uh, uh, politeness, like etiquettes, when I say, uh, say uh, 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 good morning or a good evening to you, do I really mean that I am wishing you well for the morning or the evening. Now, this uh, in some culture is uh, or in most of the cultures that we are used to today is fine etiquettes, but uh, if analyzed or looked at from a culture which holds truth as uh, a final value is well and is, is a denial of uh, the connect between uh, a claim and its uh, uh, intention. Okay, now, let us let us uh, simplify this. So, differences in practices, difference in practices is not necessarily difference in values. So, uh, practices embody core, uh, uh, the core of practices are values or practices embody values, values are the uh, crux of practices. Differences in practices does not mean differences in, uh, does not necessarily mean difference in values. So, now when we talked about this uh, couple who got married. Now, they may have difference in uh, cultural practices, but they may uh, that necessarily does not mean that they have difference in values. Now, after having said all this, we can still hold that there can be a difference in uh, moral or core values also. That uh, do all of us find justice as desirable? How we interpret or analyze justice? there may be variance. Do all of us find fairness as better than unfairness, whatever our uh, definition of fairness be. Uh, do all of us find making and sticking to commitment um, better than uh, making and uh, breaking commitments. Now, these are fundamental values. Now, if there is a difference in these values, what, what does it signify? Very often now, if you look at the slide, when I say that well, the ethical relativist is a tolerant person. Now, what are we meaning when says that the ethical relativist is tolerant? Because when the ethical relativist is actually tolerating, so this uh, credit that the ethical relativist is given that well, uh, the ethical relativist is tolerant is actually not uh, justified, because even the act of tolerance implies that uh, a judgment is already being made and only that the judgment is uh, not expressed or enacted. So, 
the ethical uh, relativist where crucially uh, disagrees with the absolutist is that a trans perspectival frame of reference is the goal of an ethical engagement. Now, the ethical relativist believes that this trans perspectival uh, enterprise is not possible and this is where the ethical relativist differs from the uh, ethical um, absolutist. Now, let us take an example is the universal declaration of human rights an example of such trans perspectival claim. Now, we will talk about the uh, universal declaration of human rights that well, how does it uh, stand for um, a trans perspectival uh, claim? Because, well, when, when the United Nations declare the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it expects it to be binding on all people at all times across all countries and civilizations. Now, this is a blatantly uh, anti relativist claim that, well, uh, there are certain uh, practices or certain rules or certain laws or articles as the UDHR mentions which are applicable all um, through the country and civilization. So, there are core values which are embodied in these articles that are fundamental and um, non negotiable across cultures. So, if we are an ethical if you are an ethical relatives you would have to di disagree with the universal declaration of human rights. A non judgmental relativist has to uh, uh, cannot judge. Now, imagine yourself when you say that you are uh, 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 when an agent says that she or he is tolerant of the other, well, she or he is not actually an ethical relativist, she is or he is making a judgment only not expressing it. Let us say uh, 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 you are walking by a park and you see another person um, mercilessly uh, uh, kicking a puppy. Now, you would uh, as an ethical relativist be indifferent to it that how does it uh, that it is his uh, life it is his culture and for him if it is right I cannot judge it. If you feel uh, that what that person is doing is wrong and yet not express it you could be said to be uh, tolerant that well you disagree with what he is doing, but you are uh, uh, you, are, you disagree with what that person is doing, but you reserve your judgment or uh, um, your uh, uh, expression of your uh, judgment to that individual. If you are an absolutist, you would actually go and ask him that to stop doing that or uh, that well he is doing the right thing and let him continue do the, doing that. The very fact that one can sit on the judgment seat on the other or one does judge the other or one can judge the other indicates that ethical relativism may not be as appealing as it sounds initially right that well um, for uh, uh, and uh, imagine an ethical relativist going through life well any value or acts taking place around the ethical relativist cannot uh, react to such an act because his his uh, uh, meta ethical claim is that well uh, there is nothing that we uh, there is there is no judgment to be taken on uh, uh, another moral frame of reference. Okay, so um, tolerance is is not as much as an indicator of uh, uh, ethical relativism as perhaps it is made out to be. Now we will go ahead to see the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Let us take a look at these rights and find out transperspectival claim.